I knew the range that I had to put my, my, my voice in to get that tone because I knew that if I sung Highway to Hell and went, no, stop signs, be living. I knew I could get that tone right there. Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. It's the latest news update. We've been chatting to people from the comfort of their own home. Now, you know my next guest from Mariana's Trench. He is back with some brand new solo music. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Ramsey's on the line. How are you, Josh? I'm good, man. How are you? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. Very, very nice to see you. I hope you're keeping well out there. You're in Canada, right? I take it at home at the minute. Yes, I'm in Vancouver. Yeah. How's things out there at the minute? All kind of okay? See, keeping, keeping safe and all that? Yeah, as far as I can tell. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. How about you? <laughs> yeah, not too bad, man. Not too bad. All good. Um, I mean, let's dive into it, man. This is really exciting time for you because it's kind of the first steps into this, this wider solo project. This album's coming and we have the first single. I guess the place I want to start with really is uh why now in a way you know obviously you've had a lot of success with the band in the past you've done a lot of songwriting for other people as well why did now feel like the right time to do a josh ramsey solo project like this um i had always planned at some point i knew that i wanted to do a solo record where i played all the instruments myself and the guys in the band knew that as well um and i totally have their full support and everything but i sort of never had time to get around to it because i'm in the band um, and, or writing songs for other people or whatever. And then the pandemic happened and everyone was in lockdown and we couldn't like, we couldn't really see each other anyway. So I sort of was like, well, now's the time. <laughs> and and that, that so I, I don't think without the pandemic, I don't think it would have happened, honestly. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's something. I mean, it's kind of been a continuing theme, as you might imagine, but a lot of musicians we've chatted to recently they did just find themselves involving these projects while they had all this extra time to kill. I mean, was this entirely all new musical ideas or did you have anything yeah. kind of on the back burner? That? Oh, really? So all new sessions like this? All, all, all new, yeah. Um, but, but in getting a lot of guests to come in and do featured vocals, that was really easy because everyone was available because <laughs> no one's on tour, right? So uh, that, that part was, uh, was very fortuitous. It was like everyone I called and I was like, hey, would you want to sing on this? Everyone was like, sure, I'm not doing anything. You know? <laughs> Perfect time to get a guest list together right there. Yeah. <laughs> it worked so, so well, dude. Uh, well, let's dive in with this single that everyone can kind of hear now. It's called Lady Mine. Uh, let's start with the sound of it because about big 70s rock vibes. I know you've said it yourself on this. Um, what were the kind of inspiration points there? Because it definitely has that, that classic guitar sound kind of swagger about it, this one. And the big horn section and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, well, the first thing I thought to myself was um, when, when I was when I set out to do the record as a whole, I, I said to myself, I'm not going to make a Mariana's Trench record because what would be the point in me just making a Mariana's Trench record on my own? I don't think anyone would appreciate that. So but I'm the songwriter for Mariana's Trench. So I was like, OK, so how do I make this different? So my, what I arrived at was well, don't write a Mariana Trench record. And how about I do every track as a different genre? That's what I'll do. I'll do every track will be totally different from one another. Um, so I wanted to like, so there's pop songs on the record as well, but I wanted to make sure to have a couple songs that were like rock. Um, and uh, so there's also, you guys haven't heard it yet, but there's also like a grunge song that sounds like it's like right out of 1991. Like it's like grunge. Um, so there's that. And, and then this was like a very seventies inspired song. And the first thing that I was thinking about was even though he's not a seventies artist, he's certainly very inspired by the seventies. And I was really thinking about Lenny Kravitz and uh, the stuff that he does. Cause that, that sounds like it could have come out in the seventies, his stuff for sure. Um, so I was sort of thinking about that and I was, and I really, Really liked um he's got that rock and roll attitude but he's also got like kind of like a funky swagger to him and and i was sort of i was sort of thinking about that and um so i was like okay i'm gonna write i'm gonna write like a rock tune that has the big horn section i really want to do something with a big horn section um and then it kind of went from there and i don't think what i arrived at actually sounded anything really like lenny kravitz <laughs> in the end but that was the inspiration um and then for the vocals um, I, I knew this is funny, but like there's been a couple of times and I've been drunk at a bar and there's been a cover band on stage and they've pulled me on stage to come sing a song with them. And inevitably it's always ACDC. Oh, so right. I, I knew, I knew the range that I had to put my, my, my voice in to get that tone because I knew that if I sung Highway to Hell and went, no, stop signs, be living. I knew I could get that tone right there. So I put it in the same key as Highway to Hell, sitting in the same register as Highway to Hell, because I knew my voice would sound like that in that register. <laughs> 
<laughs> there you go. A smart move. Work with what you know, man. And sometimes that's the karaoke classics. I love yeah, it. Yeah, you got to just know, really know your own voice. <laughs> Absolutely. Every day's a school day, even in karaoke bars, dude. I love that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you mentioned guests on the record, obviously a guest on this single, Chad Kroger. I know he's been a friend of yours for a long time. He's done some writing with Nickelback and stuff in the past. Um, I, have, yeah. I guess, yeah. Um, what made him the kind of right fit for this? I think it really does suit his voice, this track as well. Well, one th it does suit his voice. Um, he sounds amazing on the song. Um, I think, I, I, well, first of all, I thought, I thought a fun thing about this song as a whole is it feels like a departure for me and it feels like a departure for him. I don't think this song is something that anyone would expect either of us would be on. So I thought that was kind of cool just because I like to keep people guessing. Um, and then oh, as I was working on the song, and like I said, doing that sort of like ACDC style singing, I was like, who else could I ask to do this? And then I quickly realized Chad is the only person I know that could sing this. <laughs> He's the only guy that I know who, who could do this. Uh, and then I started picturing his voice um, and then I was like, wow, I really hope he says yes to this because I can't possibly pitch this to anybody else now. Um, and thank God he did. <laughs> Yeah, it's got to be a lovely thing as well, because like I said, you know, you guys have worked together a couple of times before and everything. What was yes. the working experience like on this one? I imagine at this point you've got to have at least a bit of a shorthand in a studio kind of thing. Um, we're good pals. Um, I wasn't there. Uh, it, I wasn't there when he did his vocals. He didn't, he didn't need any help from me. Um, I basically just sent him the song and he sent me back like one vocal take. <laughs> and, it was, and it was that take and it sounds awesome. <laughs> he doesn't need more than that. I, I, can, I can speak from experience with working with him in the studio on Nickelback stuff. He's a really consistent uh, studio singer. So he only ever really does like two or three takes. That, like it, it sort of just is, he sounds like that and that's what you get. Um, and it's awesome. So uh, he, it's not like he sent me a bunch of takes for me to like root through and, and like create a vocal. He just sent me one take and it was awesome. And that's all we needed. <laughs> Perfect way to do it, especially in a pandemic. That'll work very yeah. nicely. Nice and straightforward. Uh, well, we know the album's coming as well. Josh Ramsey show. And like, again, like we keep saying, there's lots and lots of guests on there. And yeah, lots of different styles. Talk me through some of the other kind of stylistic choices on here. We know we got grunge. What other kind of genres were you keen to hit off on this project? Um, I, you know, I, I think because I set out to do something where I was trying to explore as many genres as possible, as soon as I realized that was my goal, that was actually like very freeing because I was like, okay, so there's nothing I can't do. Let's just do whatever we want to do. So there's, there's like a country song, but there's also like a full on like Ibiza EDM song. Uh, there, there's also a full on like 1940s big band swing. Like it's really all over the place. It's uh, I did I did one song with a or two songs with a full symphony orchestra that sound like right out of like a Disney movie or something. Uh, it's really all over the place, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that definitely sounds it, man. What a nice way to be able to kind of stretch creative muscle like that. And and yeah, a very collaborative process. So I guess. The next question is, how did you narrow down a list of thinking, okay, I've got a big band number, who do I want to sing on that? I've got a grunge number, who do I want yeah. to hear on that? Um, a really, I just sort of let the songs dictate that. Um, some songs I did write with someone in mind and some songs I didn't. And some songs I was just like, got to the end of it and went, okay, who, who do I think would be great for this? And I was just really lucky that I, um, I got to work with so many great singers. Um, no one really needed any help from me. Uh, they were all, they're all like su such great, great singers. Um, and that's really quite an honor to be able to sing with so many people. Um, but yeah, mostly I just let the songs like dictate who, you know, who, who would be good for them. Um, uh, there's a couple that I wrote with people in mind. Like there's a, there's a country song on the record that specifically is with a country singer named Dallas Smith. Um, and he's a really great singer. And I did that song. I wrote like actually picturing his voice. Um, but I mean, that, that's not that different for me because I write songs for other artists all the time. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty used to, um, picturing somebody else's voice and trying to write something for somebody else's voice. Like that's something I do regularly anyway. Um, so that, that wasn't necessarily that much of a challenge for me. That sort of was just what I do anyway. Um, and actually this is a great writing exercise to tell to like other young writers, um, or aspiring writers. If you try and picture another artist and try and write a song for them, that's a great writing exercise because immediately you're not writing for what you want. You're trying to write something to fit for what somebody else wants. And that's a great learning tool to learn how to try different things. And that's something I already do all the time. Um, so yeah, this was sort of like a whole record that was like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> another great experiment to have no makes a lot of sense man nice to be able to kind of yeah try something that's a little bit of a departure like that and you know like we say you know you you consciously clearly wanted to do something that wasn't the band and kind of take a step away from that yeah. but what's been interesting is i found again with so many musicians I've been chatting to recently is that those creative juices just don't stop flowing and they're already on to the next thing and already thinking about other things but i'm no, no oh, yeah. given that you write for other people as well you're probably constantly thinking about that in terms of mariana's trend specifically were there any ideas that appeared where you thought that's one for the band. We're banking this one over here. Yeah, yeah. There's two. There's two that, that were like that. And also, you know, whenever I work on other projects, like writing for other people, there's always skill sets that you learn when you're writing for someone else that I can then bring back to my own project. Um, and I feel like doing this album, I really learned a lot because I was so stretched out. And th there's a lot of tricks that I learned that I can bring back into Mariana's Trench. And actually, I think a little bit, I'm going to bring back the, this mentality of not caring what genre we're doing and really just focusing on just good songs. Good songs are good songs. I don't care what the genre is. I just like a good song. And that's, that, that was a real takeaway for me from, from this project is being like, who cares about radio formats? And, and, and well, who gives a shit? Like, let's just, let's just make sure it's an awesome song. Um, and I, I think a, a little bit of that sort of irreverent <laughs> viewpoint of, of, of songwriting, I think I'm gonna bring that back into Mariana Trench a little bit more. I don't I, like, why, why bother boxing yourself in? What, who, who cares? Yeah, that's, I mean, hey, that's the nature of the music industry these days, right? Genre is dead. It's been said to death, that phrase in itself, but it really is true. Like, you know, everyone can kind of mix it up and do their own thing, which is very, very cool. Uh, you say you got two ideas, you think, specifically there for Mariana's Trench. What can you, I know you want to give too much away, but what can you hint about those? Oh, it was just, it was just two songs that I was like, ah, this feels more like a Mariana song. I'll, I'll just save this. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, yeah, yeah, just just a couple where I was like, nah, I'll save that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> early days, early days on it for sure. Well, I did I did want to mention the band just briefly with you as well because um, incredible anniversary. I can't quite believe we just passed, but it, it kind of escaped your attention, and that was ten years of Ever After, which oh, is yeah. you know like such a huge moment for that band. I remember that album coming out, just absolutely massive, massive moment for you guys. And uh, I just I just guess I'd love to get a little bit of your reflection, not only on that time and and what it kind of meant for you guys as that kind of standout point in your career there but also what you took away from making that record you know you say you've already learned some things from making this new solo record was there anything you made specifically on ever after that just kind of carried you forward in your songwriting ever since um there was a lot of things that's a great question um there was a lot of things that changed for me during ever after on the album previous to ever after which was called masterpiece theater that was when I first took steps into being the producer of the band but I wasn't but I didn't produce the whole album um I produced four tracks on Masterpiece Theater. Um, and I specifically said, I don't wanna be in charge of producing the singles because I don't want the pressure yet. Just, I'll just produce the cool artsy album tracks. Um, and that had gone well. So Ever After was the first turning point where it was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be the producer now. Um, and the band all thought that that was the right choice. So that was a real turning point not having another producer to rely on anymore. Um, that was a big turning point for me. Um, and another thing that I really remember from that time, that was a really exciting time. Um, and we, we evolved from playing in theaters to playing in arenas. And that was a big change. That was a big change for us. And we could bring something, something about like, we were pretty theatric already. Like, I mean, people know that about, I'm pretty theatric, but something about like, when you're playing in a theater, yeah, you can be theatric, but something about when you get into an arena, it just it just wants you to be larger than life. Like you just, it, and, and it seems like the audience is ready for more production and more craziness um, uh, when when it gets to an arena because they're you, you know they're going to compare you to every other arena act. And you know at that time the other arena acts were like you know Taylor Swift and Katy Perry, where like production is like insane. You know, like I remember seeing Katy Perry at that time, and I was like wow, she's spending like $50,000 a song in terms of production. Like, oh my God, this is crazy. Um, so, you know, we're trying to like add up to, or, or live up to like those sorts of, uh, of, uh, of, of things. And, um, but I think like musically at that time, that was um, the one thing I did uh, with that record um, that I remember is I'd always had an idea um, since I was in high school about one day I'm going to write an album 
where every song leads to the next song and there's no there's no silence on the record. There's no silence. We're going to do that at some point. And I didn't know how to do that. Um, and we started working on Ever After and I just started saying in interviews, yep, it's all going to be one song and uh, it's all going to lead to each other. And I had no idea how to actually do that. But because I said it in so many interviews, I was like, well, I have to do that now. <laughs> and I sort of, I sort of um, <clears throat> set myself up to be like, well, you like once you said it, you must do it now. Um, so, <laughs> So I sort of like set set my own bar, <laughs> um, but they, uh, but I mean it, it worked out. Um, but the funny thing was like all of those uh, <clears throat> all of those transitions between the songs on that album, it in it, it seems like it was pretty planned out. It wasn't. It was. I remember it was like the album was finished um, in terms of the mixing, um, but we had to send it to mastering the next morning. It had to be like in New York at, by like nine a.m. And it was like 3 a.m. the night before, and I hadn't done any of those transitions yet. They were all super last minute thrown together. Like there was a lot of last minute, <laughs> there was a lot of last minute stuff that went into that record. <laughs> came together in the end man came in together the end, yeah. in the end right there dude no crazy to think that's been 10 years and i'm, I'm glad you yeah. uh, you mentioned the live show aspect for that as well though because i do have to ask you of course is a live show something you've been thinking about around this new record of yours have you thought about would a solo yeah. tour solo performance okay yeah i have um um one thing i was th one thing that i had to think about is um uh, you guys have heard Lady Mine and there's a big horn section in that. Um, and there's a, there's, there's like five songs that feature horns. So I was like, ah, do I need a whole horn section to go on tour with me? That's going to be crazy. So uh, I've, I've, I've been putting together a band um, of people who are multi-instrumentalists so that if there's songs where there are horns, there's people who can fill in, but if there's songs where there's not, they can also play guitar or sing or whatever. So there's going to be, a, a, I think there's going to be a lot of um, and I'm a multi-instrumentalist, so I think there's going to be a lot of people trading instruments in the show. I think that's going to be a fun aspect of it. Good and smart move. Good, smart move, man. Yeah, it's got to be delightful to be thinking about these things and get back on the road, because I'm sure you're absolutely dying to get back out there after these last couple of years, right? Right. Yeah, it's weird. Um, we've only done we've only done two shows since the pandemic started. Um, and and I feel like um, people were so excited, not necessarily because it was us, but just because there was a show at all. Sure. Like people are just so starved for entertainment. <laughs> yeah, that communal feeling again, man. It's nice to see it kind of coming back in a bigger way. Really, really. Yeah, cool. I agree. Yeah. No, well, I mean, congrats on this record, man. Best of luck with the album and everything. And uh, like I said, you know, hopefully we'll get to see you out over here in the UK for some live shows at some point. That'd be nice to see for sure. I, I know for sure that we're coming. So we oh, haven't announced it yet, but, but yeah, we're coming. There we go. That's very, very exciting to hear, man. Nice stuff. All right. Well, take care of yourself in the meantime, man. Always nice to chat to you, right? You too, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Just wrap it.